Hello, welcome to my kitchen garden. I'm trying to beat the rain that's coming in. We had a storm last night. It wasn't as bad as they were thinking it might be, which was great. So I'm gonna quick, uh, just try to do a very quick tour and keep this really short. But this is our new kitchen garden and we're really excited about it. Uh, as you can see, we're already growing food. We do plan on expanding the bins and planting space with either pots or more of the galvanized containers, which we've given a copper look. If anybody's interested, I could do a video on how you do that. Um, uh, Cause galvanized, you can't just paint over it. You have to do a few steps to, to get um, the, the paint to stick. These have already been through one winter. We finished this up, I believe maybe last July or August in 2020. So now it's June, I think 22nd in 2021. So it's been about eight months since we finished it. Okay, well, I'll start over here. This side of it um, borders our woodland garden on this side. And we do have a strip of grass that we need to access with garden carts and with the mower. So we made, I just made this path yesterday for utility reasons and it turned out really good and I've tested it and the garden cart goes over it great. Um, we have this gorgeous path, sorry about the sun, over here, but you had to go through here and it's a little rough and it's banging up our mower and then you have to turn this corner to get to the path, which is great when you're walking but it's not great with the mower because the mower is really getting banged around. Um, I have a Ego electric, uh, battery operated mower and which I absolutely love, but it, it is, has plastic fittings on the edges and everything. So that's this side of the kitchen garden. This is the entrance way and I just decided to do Japanese iris and globe evergreens, globe shaped evergreens. And in the front, if you see, we have a crepe myrtle here and a crepe myrtle here. They are placed a little off center because of the tree roots. We weren't willing to compromise these trees at all. So the entranceway is going to be a little off center to the path due to that fact but we're going to these crepe myrtles grow in a v-shaped pattern so we're going to let them come together kind of up here at the top and prune in the center and i'm hoping that they form kind of an entryway where the crepe myrtles are overhead i thought that would be beautiful when they bloom so that that's the intended purpose for later if you look all the way down and you see there's a fire pit and blue chairs. That is actually where the greenhouse will go. So there'll be a, a Victorian style greenhouse, black aluminum flame, uh, framing um, with glass. We're hoping it can hold up to our Northeast storms, but we'll see. We get heavy wind here and damaging, damaging rain. So we'll see, we're hopeful. Um, kind of going to be a we'll put it on our homeowners and pray for the best so you see we have an oak tree here um, I made a ladder out of the oak trimmings we trimmed the lower branches to let in more light and made um, a ladder out of the oak and just used deck screws to screw it together the flooring is three-eighths river rock I absolutely love it. It is not like walking on driveway stone. This is driveway stone here. The rocks are a little bit more rounded, so they don't compact as much. So there is a little squishiness under your feet, which I absolutely love. I find it massaging. But um, uh, someone commented on another video that it they you might find it hard to walk on. Um, I, I don't, but I could see that being a problem. Um, I absolutely love it. We do have fabric underneath it. And then I put porcelain tiles down the center. And they do provide an extra bit of support when you're taking a garden cart down it because the garden cart would sink into it. 
but it will roll over it also. But the heavier it gets, the more it sinks in. And I also love the look. It kind of leads you down the row. We have four at this time raised beds. Um, they're galvanized feed tubs. And I have various vegetables going in them now. There's only two of us. Um, my husband and I, our kids are in their 30s and we have two grandkids. So um, we don't have to feed an entire family. So, and I also have in the Zen garden, two raised beds. And I also have a separate raised herb bed at the back of my house. So we have plenty of planting area and I'm also starting pots over here. So there's going to be a whole array of pots. I find them a little bit easier to organize. I have beans growing, um, well, seeds that I planted yesterday. We are growing, so this is a potage, um, which is a, a, a fancy way of saying a kitchen garden. It, um, potages tend to combine uh, flowers, fruits, and vegetables all growing together as one. The, the flowers draw in pollinators and sorry about the traffic noise back there. Um, we are a suburban garden so we're surrounded by houses and so there is some traffic in the mornings. It's not usually too too bad. But we are, so we are growing fruits, vegetables, and we also have um, flowers in here, annual flowers. And at different times, we have more or less. Um, so I could show you how how they're doing. Um, we use we use to fill these bins. I'm not going to lie; they cost a lot of money to fill the first time. But what we did to kind of get down costs were at the bottom of the bins. I loaded um, tree cuttings, um, grass clippings, leaves, and kind of have the bottom of the bins composting as I grow on the top of the bins. I will say doing it with that method, excuse me, doing it with that method does cause a lot of settling so you have to prepare that they sink and you can kind of see that they're they're getting lower as but then I come in with more compost and that's pretty much all I fill it with um, I either use uh, ca uh, composted cow manure or compost we've made or this year I'm trying out land and sea compost also I like to use various um, mushroom compost, various things to get different microbes into my garden. And as you can see, they're doing really well. Um, all the greens, this is our second slew of greens. Of course, there's my air conditioner coming on. Sorry about that. Okay, where was I? Yes, this is my second set of greens. I have garlic, which I just tested yesterday. They're not ready. I got these in late, the garlic. And that's just regular um, grocery store garlic that I put in. Um, but you can see the, the heads are still small. I did taste it. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to just eat that one. So it is ready for eating. It's just that the, the bulbs aren't, aren't big yet. Um, they are dying back. And I don't know what type of garlic it is. So I don't know how large the cloves will get. I have um, really nice celery. You can see in there some really nice stalks of celery. The greens are looking beautiful. Um, me and Willow eat the greens. Willow is my rabbit. Um, we're plant eaters. Um, me and my husband, we don't eat um, most, well, we don't eat lamb meats. We, we're, pes we're technically ovo pescatarian. We barely eat eggs even. So we do eat fish and we eat plants and that's about it. No dairy, no chicken, no beef. So we need a lot of greens. It's my tomato plants and I built these wigwams myself out of oak trimmings that I used. And so far so good, we'll see. I might have to add something to help support. I am doing the core gardening method. 
um, where in these bins, in the center, was I, I trenched out um, a trench big enough to hold a slice of uh, straw or hay. So there's one slice of, um, of straw or hay put in the middle to help um, with moisture. I did take some peppers off of these plants yesterday. I took three peppers off the plants. There's one there. And I did have to spray them with copper because three of the peppers, these are brand new pepper plants. I just got them two weeks ago. They came in with, um, I think, how do you pronounce it? Thracnose or something like that's a fungal disease. So unfortunately, I brought that in with the plants. The plants look much better today for the for the copper spraying. So we'll see if that does the job or if I have to do one more spraying. It did rain last night, so we'll see. There's a Jackby little pumpkin, which I'm going to train down this um, this little ladder. Um, I've done it before with cucumbers and squash. And then I just let them go down onto the gravel. So it gives you more growing space. All right, I think that's all I needed to say about that. We have blueberries growing. There's two blueberry bushes. I'll show you in a minute that they do have some blueberries on them. Um, we have four grapevines. Uh, they seem to be doing really well. And I noticed yesterday they are beginning to form little seeds. There you go. So like they are very happy. I'm growing them mostly for the vines, not necessarily just for the fruit. So I will allow them to have more green and vines than you might normally if you were, if you were growing just for the grapes. Um, this, I'll have to back up a little, will be a utility area in here. We live very close to the beach and we drive on the beach and we take paddle boards and kayaks. And so we have, we needed a storage area. So if you can kind of envision it, sorry, I'm backing into a willow tree here. If you can kind of envision it, this trellis will be an entrance way. The two rows of, there's four rows of Sharon, one, two, three, four rows of Sharon's that will form a hedge. They will get huge and we will, they will probably go up as high as the, the trellis. And um, we will keep them trimmed very narrow, but I wanted something blo that bloomed and didn't need anything evergreen. So I don't mind if you can see through them in the winter. We're not going to keep anything ugly back there. Just, just want some extra utility areas. You need that. So my husband will build doors or, or we'll put some like fabric to kind of, um, so I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think it'll be neat. My husband built gorgeous, gorgeous things out of pallet wood. So we'll see. We just put up this bell and we're calling it our work stoppage bell because my husband and I are kind of workaholics and, um, we ring that when it's like, we're done. It's time to, time to pack it in and go in and relax a little bit have a cocktail or whatever, <laughs> go out for a meal. And so it's become a joke that we ring that bell. It also has a copper look. We found it at an antique store. Super excited about it. When I was a teenager, we were rung home every night from playing um, for dinner. And if you did not haul your butt home, you got in a lot of trouble. Things were different when I was a kid. <laughs> Um, okay, so over here I, I have pots. We're going to get a third pot, the larger pot. We cannot find it. Every time we find them, they either have price gouged them or they're, they're cracked. So I do like clay. I like the look of it. So I like to add that in. So the cast iron look table. Um, we just have some flowers growing on it. And along here we have an evergreen kind of wall started and a cottage garden at the base of it begun um, where we have roses, cat mint, um, iris, dianthus, salvias, liatris. We have some hyssop. 
Again, we have more grape vines right there and over there growing onto the fence. So they should take over the fence. And we have nine bark, huge nine bark back there that are doing really well. Again, where this section is here will be a glass Victorian style greenhouse. I did order it this year and they let me order it, but it was not in stock. So I canceled the order and we're still waiting with the company to see when they're gonna get some in. There was a high demand on them this year. I have strawberry planter started. I just started it a couple weeks ago. I have some strawberries up on my deck, but I wanted a, a kind of a planter going. It's just some annuals. And at an antique store, I found these coal buckets. I found two coal buckets. I love this one. The, the guy did not want to part with it and I kind of um, begged him to kind of let me have I said it would get a great home and I would take really good care of it and he laughed and uh, I gave him five dollars more than he wanted for it and he was like okay fine <laughs> so now I have it I love it I'm gonna take back pictures so he knows that it's being cared for so this is the cottage and evergreen garden that I started um, just this year. They, these plants, they are going out of bloom and they do need dead, deadheading. They were gorgeous. Some salvia re remaining, some daylilies. Again, the, the grapevines are doing really well. To the back, which will be the Behind the greenhouse, eventually, we have a compost bin that my husband made out of pallet wood. We do need to put a front on it because we really can't put more in there until we put a front because it's just going to spill out onto the gravel. This is our wildlife garden that will be at the back. And this is where our morning doves, little chicks, kind of sit. They sit on the ground for a while before they fly away. And unfortunately we have, we have cats um, that my neighbor feeds. And so I worry about them all the time. I'm gonna get an ultrasonic um, scatter, you know, that, that kind of, I'm hoping that'll work to keep the cats out of this area. I'm not sure if it'll bother the birds though. So I'm a little worried about that. This is just a wild area. We won't be tending this area except to add logs and sticks and more habitat. Um, I have four, or is it three? three? Three milkweeds growing, some lily of the valley. The lily of the valley is put in the back, away from my grandkids. They're not allowed in here. And um, for cover for the, the morning doves. I'm hoping that'll spread around. And I built a wigwam in there, which the birds will sit on and seem to enjoy that. We have um, Black Eyed Susan and Cardinal Flower. This area does not get very much light. This is a shade area. This is not even a part shade area. This is a shade area. But it seems like everything does well. We had beautiful, beautiful uh, caterpillars on it last year. So the monarchs did lay their eggs. So they have found it, which is great. So it can spread around wild in there. I don't mind it. And we just, this was, um, I believe a tree that had fallen down. It was a, it was dead. I know that we, we don't take any trees out. We preserve every tree we can. Um, but I had my husband cut it into obviously little you know stumps and we used it to line this area and today I'm going to start digging my frog pond so this will be the inch the back entrance way into the behind the greenhouse eventually 
so that you can get to the compost pile. We wanted a nice wide opening. Again, we have a great vine growing. We have all my willow trees along here, um, kind of ornamentally to kind of accent the walk path through here, which is grass. And then this borders the woodland garden, this side of the kitchen garden. And the woodland garden is doing really, really well this year. The caladiums are just starting this to come This was meant up. to be a semi-formal design. I needed some order in this area. I have, basically my garden is broken down into what I consider nine rooms or sections. And so I have a lot to tend. So I wanted one area, of, well, this side of my garden from front to back to be kind of more orderly. So this, what I'm standing on here will become a courtyard. Right now it's just driveway stone and it's kind of our staging area. So it's messy and not, um, there's nothing really been done in here. I have my chairs piled. I have utility items piled, but this will turn into a courtyard, which we have, we have the plans all laid out as far as what we're going to do in this space. So that should look really neat and it should be semi-formal. And I say semi-formal because I didn't, I didn't want to be restricted into a formal design, but if you notice, it is symmetrical. There's garden beds over here. What happens here happens here. There's a garden bed over there. And so it is, it is semi-formal, but I did not get out the measuring tape. It's, it's not, I don't want to be stuck in any rules for this section, but I just wanted a very orderly looking garden. So I hope you like it. I'm thrilled with how it turned out. It's um, it's it's be proved to be a very productive, very easy care space. Okay, well, thank you for joining me in my garden, and I hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you in the next video. Very exciting. The stone is starting to go down mm -hmm. yes. on the greenhouse site. Going down. My knees are killing me today, so I'm taking a day off. And Ray is working his butt off. All alone out here, 90 some degree heat. Too bad I'm in the shade right now. <laughs> <laughs> and when it goes down, it is dirty. It looks completely different after you wash it. Yeah, it looks like mud right now. Yeah. Well, because it's covered with mud. Covered in mud. We've made the final decision of what the line along the path will look like. And we're going to mimic what we did at the top of the path and just lay the cobbles on their sides and wind them around. And that will go along the path until you kind of get it going and you don't really know. We'll fill this area here in with dirt and then the sod will go right up to them. Good work, Ray. Ooh. A mushroom. Yeah, we have tons like of mushrooms. Rock. Yeah. It's a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the stone from this angle. It looks like a muddy mess, which it is. But it's a start.
And then yeah, she I kind of overfilled it the last time. That can, was a lot for me. Yep. That was a lot. It, 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 it adds up quick. It, it does. It's yeah. heavy. Yep. It's heavy. Okay. Okay. You think it's going to be lighter than stone, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's heavy. Everything's heavy. Everything's heavy this year. <laughs> Just the way it is. All right, now she's gonna wheel it over. Muscles, though. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> the 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 uh, body by COVID. <laughs> Working in the yard. It's been better than any gym membership you could ever Definitely. get. Definitely. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Up the hill. All right. And now oh, she's going to dump it, it. Okay. in here, we'll and have we're to spreading out it. Where we think we're low, and then I think it's, well, maybe not, because we'll fill that in with stone around the table seems low.